So this week what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into a video all about weapons in Astra Creation and what we should expect to see in Alpha 2. But if you haven't already watched the armor video from last week, that goes into everything to do with rarity, enchanting and tempering and these are all things that are also going to affect the weapons too. So I'll pop that up on the screen and if you want check that one out and then jump into this video because it'll kind of make more sense. But either way you can just watch this one alone and it still gives you a lot of information. But without rambling on anymore I'm just going to jump right into the video now and get amongst everything we know. So first of all what I'm going to do is I'll jump into what weapons are there actually going to be in Ashes of Creation and I'll just list them off. So we know there's going to be axes, there's going to be clubs, there's going to be hammers, there's going to be lances, you're going to get maces, both one-handed and two-handed maces. There's also going to be pole arms, halberds, spears, both one-handed and two-handed again. You're going to get daggers, scepters, staves, swords, both one-handed and two-handed as well long bows, short bows, wands, spell books and orbs so going into alpha 2 you actually do have a good arsenal of weapons and I imagine that's going to expand out massively leading to the launch of the game during alpha 2 post launch and with the DLC so I think personally that is a nice way to start off and there's a lot of variety there. So to dive a little bit more into weapons each weapon will have its own weapon skill tree which will offer a range of passive skills and proc effects and the player's choice of weapons is intended to change several things from the feel of combat to the pacing of combat and even the speed of combat. Any class can equip any weapon, there's going to be no restrictions which is really nice on what weapon you have to use while playing your class so if you really want to be a tank that uses bow that's totally up to you. Some ranged on melee class abilities will require specific weapons to be equipped though. Now to me that brings a vast amount of customization, real control over your character and that's not even taking in all of the different systems and factors in the game that really give you that immersion and control and like a, a diverse feel to your character. You're also gonna have a primary weapon slot, an offhand weapon slot and a range slot. When you activate an ability that uses a different weapon from one of the ones that you're holding, it will automatically swap to the correct weapon for that ability and then swap back to the one you're using. So it was also mentioned that certain weapons will do certain types of damage and the damage types are things like blunt damage, slashing damage and piercing damage and there's also going to be several other types of damage that we do know they're including in and it's things like arcane damage, ice damage, lightning damage, raiding damage, fire damage and nature damage as well as your typical physical damage, magic damage and fall damage and I like the variety of damage factors and how certain armor pieces and certain things within the game and abilities can counteract these, it really brings more strategy to fight in, it also means you want a bigger player arsenal when it comes to the kits you're carrying or the different things going into different situations and it kind of maybe potentially swears out the chance of getting certain meta builds with all this variety because there'll be a counter and then there'll be a counter to that build as well or that skill or weapon and whatnot. We also know that each weapon is gonna have a weight class so light weapons will have the least restriction when it comes to mobility during combat, medium weapons will be a balance between light and heavy and the heavy weapons will be the most restrictive and will often lock plays in place during combat animations but I imagine that's probably going to do the most damage per hit which kind of makes sense and also makes sense to lock them in place to kind of nerf it a little bit but I'm sure with certain things within this I'll be balanced out nicely. Both crossbows and potion launchers will no longer be usable weapons as they were in Ashes of Creation Apocalypse. Crossbows have currently been fully removed and potion launchers will now only be available as attachments for ship. So I will add to that that was a bit of confusion for me because when I heard they took potion launchers out the game I was so confused how is naval combat going to work but it's nice to know they've been took out the game as weapons but it's highly likely they'll be our main damage weapon on naval combat and that is a video I am going to get into that I'm interested in but just to clarify that because I know a few folk did think they'd been fully taken out the game and how's naval combat going to work but this totally to me makes a lot of sense and I think it's the right thing they did and jumping back onto the video and not to get sidetracked too much you're also going to have weapon progression. Now as mentioned before 
or each weapon's gonna have its own skill tree, which we have been seeing over the past couple of live streams. And so far, we've seen skill trees from the bow, which was fairly nice, the greatsword, and the wand. And we've had a lot of videos speculating on certain things and showing how certain things will work. So far, as we know, weapon skills will progress around two to three times faster than adventuring skills, which is your primary skills in the game. And when progressing through the weapon skill tree, you will not unlock new usable skills. The weapon skill trees are all about granting passive skills, proc effects and other status conditions. It will affect things like the number of attacks, even your attack speed and increased chance of proc effects from basic attacks that you do to people. It's also been mentioned that procs will also offer synergy with the player's active skills and other player's active skills. There is a weapon combo system in Asher Creation as well and what it does is it selects effects that proc based on your weapon progression. Certain combos will have a better chance of triggering procs, however there is no guaranteed way to cause any proc. So when it comes to weapon targeting, as we all know Ashes of Creation is using a hybrid system when it comes to the combat in game, meaning we'll be able to choose which type of combat we actually want to use. So in Ashes we have a choice between action combat, so think BDO, more fast paced, bouncing around, or tab target combat, and there will be a button toggle of which one you can use. We all know kind of what tab target is, more like your kind of arch age, for example, same for WoW, and then games like BDO's action, and the fact that they're doing a hybrid, I personally really like, and I think it's a nice balance. I do sometimes feel action is a little bit more fast paced and entertaining, but it has to be done right. So what Ashes is doing, and the way they're doing it is, I think is optimal, and probably the best way to do it in the game. I think it also adds in more longevity to the game because obviously you've got all those old schoolers who've been gaming since 90s, some 80s, God, maybe some 70s and some coming in late 90s to early 2000s. But you really need to bring in the old school guys and engage the new people or the younger people and, and that's how I'd see it. And if we want longevity and a bigger player base, that's kind of what Intrepid need to do. Also, you want their engagement and the combat to be fun. You want to be enjoying your experience and I think 20, 30, whatever years of tab target, it just doesn't cut it anymore. Now I know I'll be fucking hated on for that comment, but it's just my beliefs and the way I believe a lot of people think and what they're showing and what they're doing is amazing. And I genuinely thought that the action was gone. I thought, oh, they're not even gonna, months and months and months ago, I thought, well, we ain't seen much, so we're probably not gonna see anything at all and it's gonna go tab target. So I was quite happy to see this. So when it comes to the action combat target selection, it's decided by using a rectangle or crosshair on the player's screen. So while using action for targeted skills, you'll need to have a soft or hard locked target. Now, as we've seen in past live stream, a soft locked target is when the rectangle moves onto a target and then their target and player will become greyed or slightly greyed out. If the target moves away from the rectangle or the player moves the rectangle off them, they're no longer going to be soft locked. A hard locked target is when the player right clicks while having soft lock target. This can also be done in the tab target combat and when the target moves out of the rectangle it will not be lost. So as always I do appreciate you watching the videos. Drop a like on the video, hit the comment section, let me know your thoughts and how you're feeling about the development of Asher Creation and Alpha 2 or what you think is going to happen during Alpha 2. Hit the subscribe button ready for Ashes of Creation and Alpha 2 testing content coming and I'll catch you in the next next one. Cheers.